Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about Institutional Review Board. So, the table of content for this presentation or for this video is we are going to firstly introduce you about IRB, Institutional Review Board, Constitution of IRB, Quorum of the Institutional Review Board, Functions and Operations IRB <coughs> does and Responsibilities IRB perform. So, talking about introduction, uh, experimentation when done on any human being is a very subjective matter to ethical standards and it promotes respect for all and promotes their health and rights. So, in what conditions or in what kind of researches we require ethical review? The second question arises. So, research uh, or research works that are involving human subjects, living human subjects or in researches where we are using the medical records of the living human subject. Uh, researches where we involve human remains such as cadaver, biological fluids, tissues, embryos, fetuses, etc. In all these aspects or all these conditions, we require IRB's permission. So, Institutional Review Board is a local, local administrative body established to protect the rights, safety and well-being of human research subjects recruited to participate in a clinical research. IRB has the authority to approve, require modification in or disapprove all research activities that fall within its jurisdiction. The IRB provides assurance to research subject that every reasonable attempt has been made to protect their right and the safety of the subject. Moving forward, we are going to talk about constitution of IRB. So, IRB consists of at least seven members whose collectively uh, qualifications and experience are there to review and evaluate the science, medical aspects and ethics of the proposed trial, such as chairperson who is appointed and who is from outside the institution. Second one is the basic medical scientist. Third one is the clinician from various institutes. Fourth one is one legal expert or retired judge. Fifth one is one social scientist. Sixth one is one philosopher or ethicist. Seven one is one layperson from the community. And eighth one is the member secretary who is appointed. Now, we are going to talk about the quorum of IRB. For reviewing and making decision on each protocol, decided the quorum of IRB should have at least five members with the following representations. First one is basic medical scientist or it is preferably uh, one pharmacologist, clinician. Third one is legal expert. Fourth one is social scientist or representative of non-governmental voluntary agency or philosopher or ethicist or it could be a theologian or a similar person. Fifth one is a lay person from the community. Quorum of IRB must include at least one member whose primary area of interest or specialization is non-scientific and at least one member who is independent of the institution or the trial site to maintain the transparency of the clinical trial. Beside, there should be appropriate gender representation on the IRB. If required, subject expert may be invited to offer their views also. And further, based on the requirement of the research area, such as AIDS and genetic disorder, specific patient group may be represented in the IRB. Moving forward with functions and operations of IRB, so, only those IRB members who are independent of the clinical trial and the sponsor of the trial should vote, provide the opinion in matter related to the study. Only members who participate in IRB or IRC, IEC, which is Institutional Ethical Committee, review and discuss should vote or provide their opinion or advice.
the irb should perform its function according to the written sops or standard operating procedure and should maintain the written record of all the activities and the minutes of the meeting and should comply with gcp and with an applicable requirement requ regulatory requirements for moving forward the investigator may provide information on any aspect of trial but should not participate in the deliberation of the irb or in the vote or the opinion of the irb the irb should establish document in writing and follow its procedure which should include determining its composition name and qualification of the member should be taken into consideration scheduling notifying its member of and conducting its meetings conducting initial and continuing review of the trial and determining the frequency of continuing review as appropriate other functions are specifying that no subject should be admitted to a trial before irb issues its written approval and a favorable opinion of the trial specifying that no deviation from or changes of the protocol should be initiated without prior written irb approval favorable opinion of appointed amendment except when necessary to eliminate immediate hazard to the subject or when the changes involve only logistical or administrative aspect of the trial other functions are specifying that investigator should promptly review to the irb deviations from or changes of the protocol to eliminate immediate hazard to the trial to the subject changes in increasing the risk of subject or affecting significantly the conduct of the trial all adverse reactions that are both serious or unexpected new information that may affect adversely the safety of the subject of the conduct of the trial ensuring that irb promptly notify in writing to the investigator or institution concerning its trial related decisions or opinions the region of its decision or opinion and the procedure of appeal to its decision or opinion responsibilities of irb also include the irb should safeguard the rights safety and well-being of all trial subject the irb should opt in following documents such as trial protocols amendments written informed consents subject recruitment procedures or advertise written information to be provided to subjects investigators brochure available safety information information about payment and compensation investigators current curriculum vitae any other may need to be fulfilled to its responsibilities the further responsibilities of irb are the irb should review a proposed clinical trial within a reasonable time and the document its view use in writing clearly identifying the trial the documents reviewed and the dates of the following approval or favorable opinion is it modification required prior to its approval or favorable opinion disapproval or negative opinion termination or suspension of any prior approval or favorable opinion the irb should consider the qualification of the investigator for the proposed trial as documented by current curriculum vitae and by any other relevant documentation of irb request the irb and iec should conduct reviewing continuing reviewing for each ongoing trial at interval appropriate to the degree of the risk of the human subject but at least once per year the irb may request more information than is given to study subject when in the judgment of irb the additional information could add meaning to the protection of the rights safety or well being of the subject the irb should review both the amount and met method of payment to subject to assure neither compulsion nor undue influence on the trial subjects payment to a subject should be prorated on a daily basis and not wholly contingent on completion of the trial by the subject the irb should ensure that information regarding payment to subject including the methods amounts and the schedule of the payment to trial subject is 
set forth in a written informed consent form or any other written information to be provided to subjects so these are the information that we are going uh, to learn about the irbs and these are the references where i have taken this information and thank you so much for your patience for listening in this video thank you